sadly, if you are tuning in this evening in order to find what the latest way of getting smashed on tropical flavors is, we're not going to do that this evening. We're going to do something completely different for all sorts of reasons. Hi. Most, most of which are related to it's freaking 2020. Hi, Colleen. Uh, hopefully, Colleen, you made it over to uh, Terry and Emily's and had a good time. David's on. David's catching us. Wow. Chris is even going to try and get on from the from the hospital. Oh, Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. Very, very cool. David, you're going to be happy to note that everything that I'm going to make this evening, I think, is stuff that Chris can have even in her current state, although you might have trouble getting it into the hospital. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting evening. Woohoo. At least I hope so. I'm back this week. I think I made a quick appearance last week. She did make a quick appearance last yeah. week. And then at some point she ducked outside and I think went to go puke. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I she turned had... out my upset stomach. Yeah, not so much. No, appendicitis. Yeah, so um, the day after we decided to take her into the hospital and get her admitted and she had surgery. Yeah, yeah. so... That was her fun and games, and so she's, she has new scars. I have new scars. She was um, home the same day, though. I mean, pretty I was, amazing I was, laparoscopic I was surgery. I very impressed with Anova Alexandra. Uh, the staff made me feel very safe from uh, Corona. They did a great job. They were very friendly um, and got me in and out. Yes, yeah, so here you are tuning into drinks, and you're hearing about our medical history. Right. Yay! We're of that age. Yeah, so. we are. Um, and then today... Today, I got to go to urgent care because for the last week and a half, yes, prior to her uh, issues, my ankle's been bothering me. And this morning I woke up and it decided it wanted to be numb and tingly. And that's a change and not a good one. So urgent care, blah, blah, blah. Why am I standing on it? Because I'm on drugs. Um, so uh, the, the medications that we are taking um, prohibit us from having alcohol. And so Star said, well, wouldn't this be a great time to do a quarantine session on mocktails? Great. Awesome. Mm, we're going to do... Low ABV. Yeah, low ABV. Um, and primary the difference here, um, a mocktail, a true mocktail... Cat, stop playing with the cord. The cat is playing with the, uh, the mic cord to the... Um, <laughs> to the camera so yeah this could get real interesting real quick if the camera goes over um, I'm not sure if that'll be me the cat my drugs whatever um, anyway uh, so mocktail no alcohol low ABV very low alcohol meaning uh, generally that you are using something like uh, bitters to get a little additional flavor in but, I mean, there's really very, very little alcohol. Um, I mean, bitters are high alcohol, but you're only using a few drops of them or a few dashes. So you're really not getting much alcohol content. We are going to make an exception, a slight exception. We are going to use some falernum this evening, which is about uh, 11%. There are some commercial falernums out there that are absolutely no alcohol. So that's an option. And then I'm going to kick it way up, and we're going to use a little allspice dram. Um, and the allspice dram clocks in at about 22, 24%. But I'm just going to use a little bit for taste, um, then that's about it. So, um, yeah, we're going to go low ABV this evening. So, um, so I can have some. So she can have some, and I can have some. And, and, and the joke was, uh, this corn tiki brought to you by the letters P and F, those being the drugs that we're on. Yes, uh, amongst amongst others. Right, yeah, right. but those the, are the, the ones that are keep we can't drink, so. right. So yay! Woohoo! Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, first, the history of the mocktail. No clue. I got none. Nothing. Uh, somebody wanted something tropical to drink. Was in a bar. Said, "Hey, can you make me something without alcohol?" Somebody probably said, "Well, yeah, we can do." All right, so um, we're gonna try that. Brooke, hi, are you guys back? Uh, I thought you were still off on enjoying vacation. Anyway, hopefully it was a good one. I saw pictures, looked awesome. Um, I think I've said hi to, well, most of the people that are on or, or said hi to the people that have commented. So, all right, uh, um, um, let's see, what am I doing? I'm doing mocktails, right. So uh, the first one, uh, one of the nice things about having a sort of complete tiki setup Wow, my arms look really big. Ooh, okay. 
uh, sorry, I'm going to go off on tangents because, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go off on tangents, um, is that you happen to have a lot of different syrups and different tropical juices and, that, and, and flavors on hand, so it's really easy to make up something. Um, the hard part is getting the flavor and texture balance right. Um, so here I'm going to basically follow the traditional one sour, two sweet, three strong, four weak. The primary difference being that the three strong is actually going to be, um, how do I, how should I say it? So a, a, first of all, I'm going, hey Chris, hi. Um, first of all, I'm, instead of using alcohol, what we're going to use is things that have very strong, potent flavors as opposed to alcohol. Um, secondly, I'm going to have to cut back a little bit on the sweetness uh, because we're not trying to counteract any alcohol burn. Um, uh, so those are the primary uh, uh, distinctions here. So uh, first thing is uh, I threw this together just a few minutes beforehand to see whether or not Star liked it and if I was on the right track. And she seemed to think that it was uh, pretty okay. So we're going to actually do that. And uh, before we do that though, there's some birthday things that went on. So my birthday was last Monday. Uh, my primary present was that I got a happy and uh, drugged out but healthy wife back from the hospital. So yay, good birthday present for me. Um, and uh, Star's birthday is coming up. And so there were various gifts that were, were received. So I know you can't actually see it, um, but hanging above my head is a little paper parrot. And if I scooch out of the way, you might be able to see the cockatoo that's right here. Yep, little paper cockatoo. So we got a couple of packs of those from my mom, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you'll see we've got the uh, tentacles here. Yep, these were uh, actually, these were get well gifts. Um, and these tentacles are actually little finger puppets, but they're going to work great for bar decoration and to put in drinks and because we got chemical, chemicals, yeah, tentacles uh, coming out of the drink. Um, Brooke wants to know if your octopus is on fire. Uh, my octopus is not on fire. Um, that is uh, the um, the incense that we are burning uh, primarily because, well, the cat box is down here. <laughs> so, um, so I got I got special special made from the Dizzy Diva um, a cocktail spoon and a cocktail pick, and she's just started doing these. And Star is going to take these and show them closer up. But uh, evidently she saw these little tiki enamel bead things and thought of us and gave us first crack at these guys. So um, this was a custom made set for this bar. So way cool that. Um, so we're gonna be using those this evening. And then um, I saw this online cause Facebook apparently knows me, knows that I smoke. Oh, wait, no, no, that's just something different. And uh, I saw it and said, you know, I have, um, I have thrown a couple of pirate themed birthday parties for my wife. And um, she likes tiki and she likes drinking out of tiki themed mugs. And the famed bar out of New York, Death and Company, uh, is doing these brand new tiki mugs. And so we got her, I got her, this cool looking skull pirate mug. Look at this, he's got a little rum bottle. It says Death & Co. on the back, yeah, Death & Company. It's this pretty blue, light blue color, bluish green color on the inside. Yeah, you totally can't see that. But awesome mug, and so we are in fact going to uh, mix up a drink for her and we're going to put it in this mug. Ruth is watching. Howdy, howdy Ruth. What? Star's pointing at me for something. The Tiki. The Tiki. Oh, Ruth, right. The Tiki. This guy came from Ruth. Um, months ago, because he's been sitting on the bar for months. Yeah. But yes, so Tiki, and, and look, we see we got, uh, right, see, he glows. Isn't that awesome? Very cool. You almost had a cat walk past. Um, black cat has nothing to do with the bar, just uh, he lives here too. Or we live here with him or provide staff functions for him, whatever. All right, what are we going to do? Um, so for this, I'm actually going to do this with a, a spindle blender. So we're going to take our, one of our uh, milkshake tins or spindle blender tins and we're going to start with that. Um, so sour. 
always a good idea to start with some lime juice. Why not? Um, you know, you happen to have lime juice because it's a tiki bar and here's some lime juice. Um, I'm going to do a fairly large build here. So I'm going to actually go two ounces of lime juice. So there's two ounces of lime juice. And then we need some sweet components. So I'm going to do um, a couple of different things here. Uh, the first component that I'm going to do is some orgeat. And I'm actually a little light on orgeat because I haven't been making orgeat. So we're going to do an ounce of orgeat, assuming I have a full ounce. Uh, maybe. Oh, it's so close. Uh, it's not quite. Uh, okay. There's an ounce of ore shot. Um, I would uh, normally double that up, but I have no more ore shot, so not doing that. Woohoo! Stay. Um, next up, I needed something sweet, gives a little, just kind of a different flavor to this. So um, I happen to pick up some of this stuff from Goya, the Guanabana, Guanabana which is actually. Sour sop, dun dun dun. And so we're gonna go with um, two ounces of that. Two ounces of that. So I'm doubling up the recipe here, right? Yep, two ounces. I have this sitting in front of me somewhere. Here it is. Two ounces of that. Hey guys. The Sequik Sue. Hi Sue. All right, so there's two of those. Um, I'm still a little light on the sweet because you usually want like a two to one uh, sour to sweet. So um, what should I do here? I know I've got some spiced syrup sitting here. Let's go ahead and use that. Now my spiced syrup is pretty strong. So I'm actually only going to go about a half ounce here. Okay, it's a little more than a half ounce. Sue me. All right. Now we need the strong ingredients. That's the sweet, the sour. What are we going to do for strong? Well, normally I'd go for rum, but we're not doing that. So I'm going to go with a full ounce, uh, doubled in this case, so two ounces of falernum. And here I'm going to go ahead and use Dr. Taylor's velvet falernum, excuse me, John D. Taylor's velvet falernum. Blah, 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 da, da, da. You're like, wait, this has alcohol. Yeah, it does. This is 11% alcohol. Not much. Um, and then I happen to have this thing that I almost threw out. I was like, what am I ever going to use this for? Because um, I keep absinthe on hand. So why on earth would I want something that uh, is an absinthe flavoring? It's a spirit essence from still spirits uh, that is intended to be mixed with a grain alcohol to kind of make your own absinthe. Um, so it's basically, it's an absinthe flavoring. Um, we're just not going to mix it with any grain alcohol um, or AKA vodka in this case, um, in that case. And woo, we're gonna overflow a little bit. And then I'm going to add two, three, four, five, six. That was where we were thinking we would go with the first time I made this drink. I'm doubling that, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because the absinthe flavor did not really come through a great deal. So I'm gonna kick that up just a tad. Could tell that there was maybe something there and whew, now I can really smell the absinthe. So that's good, that's cool. Um, what does falernum taste like? Um, a little spicy, uh, what we got here? It's um, aromatic, lime, spice. So your typical Jamaican spices. Um, there's usually some nut element to it as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, God, what, is it, what does it taste like? Yeah, it's definitely kind of limey. Yeah, limey and spicy. I mean, it, that's hard to, to say much more than that. Um, 
but it's a really good carrier for those uh, sort of uh, Caribbean spice flavors. Um, okay, now I'm going to have to, oh, I want a few more bitters in here. And what's in your spice syrup? Oh, what's in my spice syrup? Oh, it's the same spice syrup I use all the time. Um, so it's got some vanilla flavor, um, Jamaican allspice, cloves, cardamom, cinnamon. I just say clove, allspice, uh, nutmeg, um, and probably oh star anise, and probably two or three others that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, for the last uh, strong ingredient here, we're going to go with dash fire bitters, and we're going to do an allspice bitter, and we're going to go one, two doubled, so three and four. And here we're not even anywhere near approaching something that would be an, an ounce of alcohol in this cocktail so far. All right, so there we have it. Um, that is your uh, your weak, your sour, excuse me, your uh, that is your sweet, your sour, and your strong all in this. Now we're going to add um, some weak. So what are we going to add for the weak? Well, in this case, I'm going to add some juice to it. And I want some juice that's got a bunch of flavor to it, but doesn't really fit either the bitter, sour, or sweet profiles. So I don't normally consider um, mango to be particularly sweet as a juice. So I have some mango here um, with, uh, with pulp, so that's going to add a little body to it. And uh, doubled normal recipe. So I want two ounces of this. There we go. This is also what happens when your wife goes to the market, the international market, and says, oh, that looks interesting, and buys you, you know, a can of mango with pulp. And I'm like, okay, I can use this, made with 100% real fruit, which means there's no plastic fruit in it, which, you know, that's a good thing. Um, now, I want to get the mouthfeel of this up, and there's some pulp in here, so that's going to be good, but you really want to establish that mouthfeel that thickness, uh, I'm going to go here with two ounces of uh, top cocoa coconut milk. So this is an unsweetened coconut milk as opposed to like a coconut cream or cocoa Lopez, which would add even more sweetness to this. And we don't want to do that. So um, that's what we're going to do. So two ounces of this coconut milk. There we go. Now I'm going to add some ice to this because we want this cold and we want to make this frothy. So I'm going to reach in here to the trusty ice bin, find a scoop. Are we having fun yet? I'm not sure. I think we're having fun, but I'm, I'm really a little unsure at this point. Mostly because my ankle freaking hurts. Um, so there's about a full scoop. That first scoop was not entirely full, so I added a little more. Um, so we're most... Most of the way up here, you can tell where the ice is in here because there's a frost line on this glass. So I'm going to stick this under here. I'm going to give it a little longer uh, stir than we would normally do. David said, we are who you are too. What, in pain? Oh, in fun. <laughs> I think we're all in pain, but we're all having fun too. All right, um, and for this, uh, there's really no reason here to be pouring this over clean ice or anything along those lines. Um, so I'm just going to drop this straight in this glass. It's nice and frothy. Do, do, do. I have no idea how much liquid this glass takes. I'm guessing here. Oh, that's not so bad. Cool. Um, and then we're going to just... Uh, we're going to stick this little guy in here. Here's a banana flower with some pineapple chunks. It's dripping with a skewer on it. We're just going to sit that back there behind that. Need a straw. Let's go with a big fat straw because there's crushed ice in here. Stick that in there. I'm going to give this a taste. That is a uh, perfectly... Refreshing, acceptable, non-cocktail. 
Um, and now Star is going to come and tell me whether or not my estimation of that is correct. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. Needs rum, but you know. Yeah, of course it would it would be better with rum. Um, it would be better without pain, but you know, whatever. We do what we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there you go. There's a, a nice basic mocktail for you. Um, low ABV. Low ABV. Yes, sorry, low ABV. Um, and there's still more in here. I'm going to pour that into here. Wow. Okay, that mug does not hold as much as I thought it did. Hmm. Oh, that is lovely. Um, all the flavors come through. There's a little hint of spice. The absence still doesn't play a lot. Um, but I think there's a back note of it somewhere in there. I think you would miss it if it were gone. Oh, by the way, have you seen these glasses? They're kind of cool. They've got these little uh, tentacle legs on them. It's really funny because the ads for these say something about uh, sometimes when drinking we're a little unstable, so go with a glass. It's got, you know, more legs on it. Turns out these guys are really unsteady on their little four legs, so you have to be really careful with these guys. Anyhow, cheers. Cheerio. I can have this and Flexerol. Yay! Oh, that is, that is kind of tasty. Oh, you know what would make that? Nutmeg. Just create a little nutmeg over the top of this. How's that? I'll change the flavor on this. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, it doesn't really add to the flavor too much. Oh, there's a little note. There's a little note right there. You want some? You want to? No. Okay. Kristen missed the whole mnemonic. Hmm. How is that possible? I don't know. I'm going the wrong direction. You are. There we go. There's the mnemonic. So this is a mnemonic for generally making a punch. So it starts with one part sour, and then two parts sweet, three parts strong, which is usually rum, um, and then four parts weak. And usually that weak is water, ice, tea, and juices that don't normally fit the profile of being either sour or sweet. Um, depending on your tiki lexicon and depending on how you like your drinks, I tend to consider orange juice more of a weak than a sour. Um, pineapple comes in uh, largely as a weak, but there's some sweet elements to it. So if you use a lot of pineapple as your weak, you're going to want to cut back on the sweet of your cocktails. Um, the nice thing about that mnemonic is it doesn't specify ounce, gallon, anything else. It's just one part, two parts, three parts, four parts. So if you're making punch, for example, and you're making punch for a lot of people, instead of using ounces, use gallons and you'll have a lot of punch and you'll be drinking that punch for quite a while and people will enjoy it though. Um, so it's all good. Um, and I think it's, I mean, we just showed it's a great place to start for something that you're just trying to riff on. You know, you're just trying to go, I don't know what to do here. Um, I know that some flavors are going to play well together just because I've had cocktails with those flavors in them. But per, as far as proportions, what should I do? Um, the mnemonic works uh, really, really well. So there you go. Um, there's the mnemonic. Um, one, two, three. Uh, so the, the history of the mnemonic. Um, I don't actually have my copy of Potions of the Caribbean uh, here with me. Um, because it's over at uh, Brooks' house. Um, hope you're enjoying my copy of Potions of the Caribbean, because it's kind of cool. Um, and it actually lays out how that mnemonic um, changed and altered through, uh, through time um, from the original sort of uh, uh, daiquiri, late daiquiri-esque era um, and into the early, uh, just pre-prohibition, skip a bit for prohibition and then after prohibition. Um, and the various, uh, the one, two, three, four didn't stay the same, but the sour, sweet, strong, weak did stay the same. Um, 
but the modern mnemonic is one, two, three, four, seems to work well. Um, I do think that maybe some of the change up in the uh, numbers is probably due to the different kinds of alcohol that are being that was being made at that time versus what's being made now. Um, most of our spirits today are a lot cleaner. Um, uh, they're a lot less nasty um, in their flavor profile. And uh, as a consequence, maybe an earlier mnemonic would be one, two, two, three, or one, two, two, four. Um, in this case, we can have the three strong and not be too overpowering. Um, it is a little bit of a struggle working with that mnemonic and trying to figure out exactly how that should play out with the three strong for doing low ABV or mock cocktails. Um, so what we're going to do um, now is we are going to actually, uh, instead of using falernum, we're going to use some allspice dram. So the alcohol content will be just a little higher because the allspice dram is clocking in somewhere north of 20%. I think, let's see, uh, St. Elizabeth's is 22 and a half, and this is a commercially available from any Virginia ABC store. Uh, you can get it in Maryland. Of course, you can get it in D.C. because what can't you get in D.C.? Let's face it. Um, what you can get in D.C., though, is uh, can get, can and should, is Cotton and Reed's uh, Allspice Dram. Uh, they do a really nice Allspice Dram. Um, again, this is essentially um, various spices infused into a light rum. So their ingredients are rum, allspice, ginger, dried lime, cinnamon, burdock, clove, nutmeg, Genetian, which is an ingredient in a large number of different uh, gins, long peppercorn, nigella, nigella. They have a little bit of nigella lawson in here. Wow, wonder where they got that. Uh, some molasses and some sugar. Um, and uh, this clocks in a little higher. This is a 24%. Um, but the, the flavors on this, the, these are Christmas spices galore. Uh, also works great for uh, dousing fruitcake in. If any of you were thinking about making fruitcake, now would be the time because then your fruitcake will sit and marinate until Christmas. And let's face it, nobody's going anywhere, so you might as well start working on your fruitcakes. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do now? So, what? Kristen would like this book. Right, so I thought I'd let you tell this book. Oh, Kristen would like this book. She would like to know about this book. You should tell her about this book. I should tell people about this book. Okay, so um, this was a present from my wife um, a few months back, just because, uh, and because it had been mentioned. Um, and this is uh, Spirits, Sugar, Water, Bitters, um, which is the story of the cocktail. And uh, it starts out in ye olden time, which is actually older than you think it is. Um, this is, starts out from, you know, the first cocktail was probably a piece of rotted fruit that one of our primate ancestors sucked down and got tipsy off of, um, and takes us all the way through, through the bad days of the 1970s and early 80s when the Cosmo reigned supreme, um, through to today's craft cocktail resurgence and tiki resurgence. There's an entire chapter on tiki in here. Um, there's a lot of history, a lot of references to other good books to read. On this. So here is Spirits, Sugar, Water, Bitters by Derek Brown with Robert Ewell. Columbia. Columbia. Um, right. Uh, um, Derek Brown is the owner, I think, of Columbia Room in the district, um, which is a fine, fine place to have a cocktail. Um, we had reservations. Yeah. Sadly, we had reservations. <laughs> you know what happens to those. Uh, reservations were like March or April, something like that. Yeah. Um, poo. COVID. Blah. 2020. Go away. Actually, take your own sweet natural time getting through 2020. We don't want it to, un to end unnaturally. That would be bad. Um, I'm not sure what that would mean, but considering all the Cthulhu references around this bar, it can't mean anything good. All right. Let's make another cocktail. Um, this one I'm going to do shaken. Um, not for any good reason. I just want to see what it's going to be like to do a shaken cocktail instead of one in the spindle blender. But what I am going to do is, um, I don't like the big chunks of ice in my cocktail and I think it just uh, adds a better textural element to it. So I'm going to shake it and then I'm going to strain it over crushed ice. So there you go. That's what we're going to do. 
Um, so uh, I need, in that case, a shaking tin. So here we're going to start that and that. Dun, dun, dun. And what are we going to do? We're going to do, we're going to split our sour. So the sour ingredients, we're going to go with uh, half ounce of grapefruit and a half ounce of lime juice. That'll work. Half ounce grapefruit juice. And wow, I threw coconut milk all over the place. That's why I have bar mats. <laughs> Trust me, if you're going to be making cocktails a bunch, bar mats, godsend. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a bamboo plating here that sits on top of my bar because my bar is white enamel, uh, which is very undiggy. Um, but uh, sitting on top of that are my bar mats and they keep this bamboo from getting all sorts of gunk and ick in it, which would rot and be gross and nasty. So we don't want to do that. Um, lime juice, half ounce lime juice. And that is our, going to be our one part sour. All right, da -doom. Now then, uh, two parts sweet. And here we're gonna go with the spice syrup. I'm gonna go two ounces of that. There's one, two, all right, two ounces. Now this syrup has really got some good spice to it, so I'm hoping it brings a lot of flavors. But um, now we get to the strong, and I'm going to add some strong flavors to this with some allspice dram, some bitters, and a little falernum. So again, I'm going to go with a base of one ounce of falernum, but in this case, I'm going to use some Bitter Truth Falernum. And I can't quite tell what the uh, proof is on this, but uh, I'm going to... Oh, it's 18, 18%. Okay, so it's a little higher than uh, what the John Taylor's was. But again, we're not using a whole lot here. I'm trying to keep this you know, under a quarter ounce of total alcohol. All right, so there's the Bitter Truth. Slightly different flavor profile. Bitter Truth is also available from your Virginia ABC stores. Uh, comes in a larger bottle. Uh, this was split off for me by a friend. We'd swap around bottles and that sort of thing. Very cool. Thank you, Brooke. Um, next up, Falern... No, not Falernum. Allspice Dram. Um, because I was going to go with the Cotton and Reed. But because the Bitter Truth is a little higher uh, ABV, I'm going to go with the lower ABV um, St. Elizabeth. And I just want a uh, quarter ounce, which means I have to switch because I don't have a quarter ounce measure on that jigger. So there's a quarter ounce. Oh. You can just sit here and do this. Oh, that's so good. Oh my goodness. Um, it is very potent in its flavor profile, so it's really not something you would ever drink straight. Although, a couple ice cubes, uh, a, like a shot of the allspice dram, and then fill the rest of your highball glass with heavy cream, kind of like a Kahluan cream, but in this case using allspice dram. Excellent idea there. Um, okay, uh, strong. I'm still working on strong. And I decided I wanted to add some bitters to this. Um, I'm going to add some mm, mm, bitters. I'm going to go four to six dashes of bitters. My initial idea was some peach bitters. I'm not sure if the peach, well, peach and allspice and, and those Christmas spices goes really, really well together. Or I could use a pre-mixed tiki bitters but I think I've got enough of the tiki spices in there. So let's go and go ahead and go with the peach bitters. Um, so this is by Fee Brothers. They make oh, lots, lots of different uh, bitters. So Fee Brothers, peach bitters. Um, I also have some rhubarb bitters because I love rhubarb. And what else have I got by them? I also have some plum bitters from them. So you can tell I just like pick up weird bitters because I like the flavors of bitters. Which brings me to another point. Um, if you don't want an alcoholic drink, 
or you want a low alcohol drink, or you've just had enough for the evening, but you're still out with your friends, a great drink um, that you can order from any bar, they can do it, um, is just bitters and tonic, so or bitters and soda. Um, you know, a few ice cubes in a highball glass, six, seven dashes of uh, bitters, and then fill the rest with some tonic water or club soda. It's nice, it's refreshing, um, and it's really low on the alcohol, so yeah. Uh, we're going to go, the peach bitters is a little on the, uh, it's not aggressive in its flavor, so I'm actually going to go like six to eight dashes here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. There we go. Looking for the wife for confirmation. She gave me the thumbs up to go for eight, so we went with eight dashes. Then we need the weak component of this. Um... Let's go two ounces of coconut milk. Sure, why not? Two ounces of coconut milk. And then I'm gonna do one ounce of, I think, what do you think, orange juice? How about orange juice with this? Orange and, orange and peach go well, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go uh, one ounce orange juice. And uh, then we're going to stop. I know that's not four parts weak. But again, we're not trying to balance out the heat of the spirit. And we're going to throw some ice in here. And then we're going to pour it over crushed ice. So we're going to get some more dilution on that. That'll bring us up to uh, four parts. All right. So let's see. We add some ice to that. Here's a scoop. Cubed ice here. If I get a little crushed ice in this, I'm not going to be sad. All right, that can go here. Lid that up. Seal our shaker. And shake. Pardon? Hard to shake along with you without yeah, the wife can't shake along with me because, well, her midriff would twist, and that would be bad. So there'd be none of that. Yeah, she's really uh, not happy with me because I keep mentioning things like, "Don't pick up anything over 15 pounds," you know, and she's like, "Yes, fine, whatever." All right, we're gonna throw this in a pilsner glass, but I'm going to fill this with, or at least marginally, with some crushed ice. I want all crushed ice here, no cubed ice. I'm going to fill that most of the way to the top, but leave some space because I don't really know how much liquid is in here because I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and math is kind of beyond me at the moment. That looks okay. It's pretty much the same color. What do I want to do for a garnish for this? Oh wait, I have a garnish sitting right here, don't I? See, I, I said I had another one of these tentacles. Yeah, and I just attached one of the banana flowers to the back end of that. We're going to stick that in here. So we've got a tentacle coming out of the glass. That's cool. And we're going we're gonna to stick this in. Drink that down a little so I can actually get the, uh, oh, that's, that's, um, I need to remember that. That's, um, that's tasty. Um, wow. Um, that flavor I was trying to get with grating some nutmeg over it, yet it comes out because of the allspice dram. That's really nice. Um, you want to, uh, try that? Uh, the nice thing about uh, making these uh, cocktails and having a tiki background nice. is that um, you get used to sort of layer layering flavors, um, and so gonna a, you're going to grab a smaller. I was going to take the remains. Oh, you're going to take the remains. You want yeah. uh, one of the footed little footy glasses? No, I'm no. not that stable. 
Okay, fine. <laughs> How about one of these? Okay. One of those do? Perfect. Grab some crushed ice. Normally, I'd be making jokes about her being intoxicated at this point, but um, she's not. Well, in a sense, I was intoxicated before this all started, but you're just not intoxicating. On That's what it is. Yeah. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, yeah. and I did uh, want to do a shout out. I put it in the text. Uh, John Shot at the People's Drug is the king of the mocktail and low ABV cocktails. Uh, if you ever want to talk low ABV cocktails, that's who to talk to. And if you ever want to go out with some friends and want to not let people know you're drinking, like sometime when, oh, Miss Tracy uh, was uh, not drinking and not telling us oh, at yeah. a party, yeah. uh, John can totally do that, just draw him aside and He'll tell you your drinks and then actually make them tell you best. Um, but. We need a uh, straw for you. Uh, we're just going to go. No, you're you good. Did. You're oh, good. I want, I want a little pride straw. You want a pride straw? But yeah. they're, they're thin. Okay. All right. Okie doke. All right, so, my pride straw. So did we have got. this off last week? I think we did. But, you know, so there you go. Um, you know, uh, come on. How cool is this? These little plastic tentacle things. I mean. Thank you. Look, just uh, stick a finger in here and ah, ah, ah see, you know, um, yeah, uh, not going to try and make cocktails with those on my fingers. No, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, you can see the temptation was there. So, um, the first cocktail, cocktail, uh, low ABV cocktail. Uh, that we did this evening. I had done a prototypical example, a prototype of that, uh, prior to this all starting. The second one, once I had tasted the first one, I went, oh, I can ch make these changes and go with that and see what the how that comes out. So I had never made that one, and that came out really well. But I don't have a third, which means I get to just play and see what we are going to do with the third cocktail. Um, I don't know. Uh, the world is my oyster. Woohoo. Um, wow, I have a lot to drink here. None of it's alcoholic. Wow. That first drink, now and compared to the second, the first drink comes off much more sweet on mm -hmm. the front end. And a much heavier mouthfeel. Much heavier mouthfeel, and that's because of the spindle blender. Um, Wow, those those are both uh, those are both tasty. That split sour, the grapefruit and lime really works for that second one, and the peach bitters really comes through. There's a nice peach flavor to it. I'm glad we went with the the eighth on that. Yeah, peach with um, like some cloves. Uh, or like an allspice liqueur or something just splattered over them and grilled during the summer. Don't miss that. That's some good stuff. Um, so I, I guess that's a that's a good thing to uh, to to talk about for a moment. Um, anytime that you have flavors that you like from cooking, you can bring those same skills and those same flavor profiles into cocktails. Generally. I wouldn't necessarily suggest making cocktails with, say, consomme or um, beef stock, although they're out there. Yeah. Um, but you can. Uh, but when you find flavors that are potentials for cocktails, like peach and allspice, putting that together in a cocktail can work really, really well for you and give you some guidance. Um, uh, Sarah will turn her nose up at this, but strawberries and black pepper is sort of a classic combination and she doesn't like black pepper but uh, that would make an outstanding cocktail would be that little bit about black pepper that little spice to it uh, with strawberries maybe uh, a lighter gin or a clean rum something along those lines yeah that would work really well so think those classic pairings uh, in cooking and just bring those in 
to your cocktail making. It'll work for you. Or at least it worked in this case. Um, and it'll work. It'll work. And I also learned that these tentacles work really, really well in the Pilsner's glasses. So, yeah. Excellent. So what are we going to do for a third cocktail? Uh, spindle blender or shaken? You like the mouthfeel of the first one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go with uh, a spindle. Um, do, do, do. This is, needs to go in the sink or by the sink. So we have that. Okay, well, okay, let's, let, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's, let's start to you know, stay on target with the mnemonic, right? Oh. So let's, go, let's start with the sour. Um, so what sours do I have in front of me? Um, well, I've got the grapefruit, I've got lime, and I've got lemon. That's orange. I can make a double. Let's make a double. All right. So the double, um, I'm going to uh, use all three. I'm going to start with um, one ounce. Yeah, one ounce of the lime juice. And then I'm going to go a half ounce of the grapefruit. Yep. And a half ounce of lemon juice. And the lemon juice, um, don't anyone kid you, lemon and lime juice have different flavors to them. And lemon juice tends to be, at least in my estimation, a little tartar on the front end and fades more quickly. So that should add um, a little bit of complexity to the drink in the fact that you'll get an initial punch of flavor that'll fade away into something else. Okay, so uh, now we have to do our sweet ingredients. So because I'm making a double here, I'm going to need, what is that, uh, two times two would be four ounces of sweet. Hey, I can still do math. Okay, it's two plus two. Uh, two plus two would be four. Five for really large versions of two. Okay, um, four ounces, eh? Uh, let's go different color scheme entirely. Because um, those were... Pretty much the same color scheme, kind of a white, creamy color. I have um, some hibiscus syrup. So this is just a simple syrup, and I took some uh, dehydrated or dried hibiscus flowers and soaked them in the simple syrup overnight, and it comes out this really vibrant red color. I use this as a portion of my grenadine, my homemade grenadine. You're like, well, why aren't you using your homemade grenadine? Because my homemade grenadine also has pama, pomegranate liqueur in it, which would make it, well, more alcoholic than I want. So we're not going to do that. Uh, four. I'm looking for four ounces, right? Sure. Let's see what we got here. Um, well, that is... More hibiscus. Wow. The other day I did get more dried hibiscus, so um, I can have some more hibiscus syrup. This leaves me with the, hey, I wonder how much actual hibiscus syrup is in there because it doesn't reach any of my lines in there. So I'm just going to go drop this in here and what do you know? Right at an ounce. Okay. Um, I'm going to go an ounce of the soursop because it's a little on the sweet side as well. All right, that's going to take me to two ounces, and I need another two ounces of sweet. And in this case, we're going to go back to the well of my spiced syrup. Now, I could just go with like a demerara syrup, um, which would add just a little bit of depth and richness, richness to the cocktail, but none of the spice ingredients from that syrup. But I think when doing these kinds of non-cocktails, you really want to amp up the, the flavor profile of all of your ingredients. 
to make that really work for you. Okay, now we're looking at the strong portion of tonight's showing. Hmm. Um, three ounces doubled would be six. There's no way I'm putting six ounces of um, falernum or uh, allspice dram or something like that in here because uh, that would just be way, way, way too much. But again, I'm going to go with a base of falernum. Um, let's go an ounce of falernum. Um, let's go a quarter ounce of the cotton and reed. Why not? Um, it's going to give a different flavor profile uh, than the previous drink that had the uh, St. Elizabeth's. Uh, so instead of doing three parts, what I'm doing is three different flavors of strong. Um, and like last time I did peach, and that worked out really well, especially with the allspice bitters. But I wanted to feel like I should do something different. So what have I got? Um, well, I've got some lavender bitters. That would be completely awful in this cocktail. Um, some tiki bitters. Some mole bitters. Mole bitters. So there are times where you go, wow, that would be nasty in this cocktail. Don't do that. There are other times where you go, this would be really good, like the pairing of the allspice and the peaches. And other times there's like, I don't know. I got no clue. Um, I like mole. A little spicy cacao, cinnamon. Sure, let's give this a try. Oh, dark. Whoop. I've got the hibiscus in here, so it's a flowery notes. Um, let's go three dashes of that. And, you know, contrary to my earlier thought, because of the flowery note... Oh, I know what I should do in that case. Yeah. I don't normally go to this, but we're going to do it this time. We're going to just dip a little in here. This is uh, rose water. There we go. Just a few dash, a few drops of rose water. Rose water is really potent stuff. Um, I'm going to try and play up the floral ingredient from the hibiscus in here without being overpowering. Um, I still think the lavender would be awful in this, especially with the uh, mole. But uh, we're going to hope. We're going to hope that the uh, rose doesn't go amiss. Wow, that's. Chocolatey, flowery, smells like, yeah, it smells like custom chocolates is what it smells like. Wow, okay, so maybe that'll work. Um, all right, so once again, we have come down to the part where we need uh, some weak ingredients, and Star is you know, suggesting that once again, we go back to the well on our coconut milk, and I think she's absolutely right there. So we're gonna go two ounces of the coconut milk. There's two ounces of coconut milk. And the question is, do I want to do something else? Do I want to add a little more coconut milk? Do I want to go with the mango? Um, what else could I possibly do? Oh, you know what I could do? They're sitting right here. And I haven't used my bar pick yet. Bar pick. So um, let's take a few pineapple chunks, throw them in there. Six, 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 seven. Lucky number seven, there we go. Seven pineapple chunks, we're gonna throw this in there. Um, could have thrown them in at the beginning and done a muddling of them, uh, could have done that. Uh, in this case, though, we are going to be just slamming this under the uh, spindle blender, so I'm hoping that that'll take care of that for us. Um, so the next up is uh, some ice. Mm. 
There's some crushed ice. It's got a couple of cubes in there that came through. A little more. Sorry if I seem a little unfocused this evening. Um, doing my best here. Hopefully we're still having fun. All right, this goes here. Zoom. All right. And we're going to do double rocks glasses. This we did make a double batch, so we need two of those. Clean off my spindle here. There we go. Pour that in here. And then we're going to top this with some crushed ice. You know, before I do that, what I am going to do Grab a straw, sneak a straw in here. I hope someone was taking notes because that's also pretty tasty. It is on video. So yeah, I guess I could watch myself and take notes and figure out how I made this thing. Um, the Oaxacan bitters, that, that was a good call. The Oaxacan mole bitters, good, good call. Uh, so you're saying, wait, Oaxacan mole bitters, what the heck? Okay, Star, this is going to you. You get, okay. the, you get the larger one, I'll get the smaller one. Uh, Not too mole for me? Oh, no, 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 there's, there's no real heat to the mole bitters. What do I do with the mole bitters? They're right here. So these are by Bitterman's for modern classic cocktails or original combination of cacao, cinnamon, and spice known as, uh, it's not Oaxacan actually, X-O-C-O-L-A-T-L mole. Yeah, good, uh, no idea. There you go, Bitterman's mole bitters. What do you think? That's yummy. That is... That is some taste. Uh, who would have thought, you know, putting uh, rose water and uh, mole bitters. Oh, right. What I meant to do uh, for some garnishing work here um, was to take my bar spoon. Bar spoon. I did have a plan. I was going to do this with something, which is drizzle some of the Luxardo juice over the top. Now this will make this significantly sweeter because this juice is way sweet. But it's such a gorgeous dark red color. Oh god. Oh god. I suppose this means that you actually want a cherry from here. I do. I got you a skewer. All right. Uh, there. That's what I'm looking for. Yep. So where I go? <laughs> this is normally easier. <laughs> God, I hate progressives. Okay, so this one's yours. Uh, We're going to do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Sure, why not? I will uh, also go one Luxardo, two Luxardo, and then let them bleed all over the uh, ice. Looks really well. Okay, uh, there you have it. There's um, three completely unnamed cocktails, and uh, I am relatively pleased with all three, and would say uh, I would welcome anybody that has suggestions for names for these. I realize it's kind of hard to do when you don't have the flavors. Uh, so make these at home, and, um, and then tell me what you think uh, about their flavors. Tell me what you think they should be called. Yeah, I don't think that we can spell mmm. I'm not sure that that really works as a 
as a um, as a cocktail name. It might, but knowing that it's Lovecraft cocktails, um, mm, could be translated as mmm or mmm. So yeah, so we don't want to do that. So uh, we'll come up with a, a different name for at least one of these cocktails because I think they uh, they all work. Maybe I'll throw these or some variation on these onto the uh, tiki menu for the next tiki party, should we ever have one. And uh, that way we've got uh, cocktails for those that uh, maybe don't want so much rum, or vodka, or gin, or, or bourbon, or rye, or whiskey in general, or scotch, or whatever else we happen to have on hand. Um, so, I'm not mocking you, I'm just suggesting that uh, we can have a good drink and not have to use uh, uh, alcohol, or at least not uh, a large amount of alcohol. So there you go. Um, three drinks falling off of a basic uh, rum punch recipe. Uh, one sour, two sweet, three strong, four weak. Um, playing a little with the different measurements and doing a bunch of different flavors into it to get some complexity so you're not just drinking some grapefruit juice or you know doing something like that. Um, I really do think having something like the coconut milk on hand as a base to provide some texture or having a juice like the uh, the mango that's got the pulp to add a little more texture really works nicely. So uh, keep that in mind and uh, wishing you well and wishing you a happy and healthy 2020. Uh, may the rest of it go much better than the first portion of it has. So at that point, um, I think we're going to end this, cut it off. Love y'all. Thanks for coming and seeing me play around behind the bar. Hope this one was amusing for you. I'm sure it will be amusing coming back and taking a look at it again. Peace out.